All right, the plot thickens. Very, very interestingly, the plot thickens. Here we have, now the last video, right? As far as about the two cups, we establish the energy that was in the room, right? We established the energy that was in the room. Now with this video, I'm going to show you in depth as, as much as I can. I won't be long. I'm going to show you in depth as much as I can just how that energy had actual history. And it shows where Kanika's text, I'm ready to go, had some, some context to it, to what was going on in the room. We have to establish these things in order to understand fully what took place before she left out of the room. But more interestingly, what took place when she first entered the room. So we're talking about her text message, I'm ready to go. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna read an article and what I'm gonna do, just so you can read it on your own later, I'm gonna scroll down as slow as possible because I'm not going to read the whole article so you can pause it at any time if you want to read the whole thing I'm going to just scroll all the way down to the end with this article it's going to show you how her uncle, Melvin Martin, a high-ranking new breed, according to the police, who had run in with the traveling vice lords. So here we are thinking that these traveling vice lords are somewhat cool with the new breeds or somewhat cool with the GDs, which they could be, okay? Um, as far as the GDs, but the new breeds, I don't think the traveling vice lords have any um, cool establishments with the new breeds. I just don't I, I, I don't see it. Because here, if you pay attention to my cursor, this says two thousand what six, right? So we're talking and it's in the, the month of November. So we're talking twelve years ago. Twelve years ago. Okay? So 12 years ago, her uncle is reported to be a shot caller for the new breeze. He was a high ranking shot caller. According to the police, he was putting hits out on people of the vice lords. And he ran within the territory of Kadzi Avenue. All right, and if you don't know what Kazi Avenue means to this case, or what Kazi Avenue means to uh, the the case of Kanika, period, you have to understand that that is the ter territory of the New Breeze. All right. Um, her brother, Kenneth Martin, is definitely 
representing the new breeds. All right. Now, I think before I show you this article, well, we're gonna read this article right here. Just, just the parts that I need to read. Okay. Now, what this article is stating is the police side of the gun battle that they had with uh, Melvin Martin's gang. All right. I think they um. What they did was they kind of interfered with a hit that Melvin Martin was putting out on a gang member from the Traveling Vice Lords. All right. They kind of interfered with that hit. Okay. So. Let me go down a little bit. See where did they mention Catsy Avenue? Okay, let me start here. Police on Thursday gave their first detailed account of the circumstances that they say led to a shootout that left two men dead and a third critically wounded. A police officer lost a finger in a gunfire. All right. They said the confrontation prevented a hit. Okay, ordered by leaders of the New Breeze. Ordered by the, by leaders of the New Breeze gang. In an escalating war, authorities blame for 19 slayings so far that year. 19 killings, right? Or slayings, whichever word you want to choose. Members of the gang have been under surveillance for months. Okay, so they've been watching. This whole time, they've been watching. They've been, you know, connecting dots. And wire tips on the three men's cell phones revealed the location of the intended target. Police say they pulled over the car about 3.45 p.m. Monday before it reached the targeted gang member and a shootout ensued. Okay. Tristan Skaggs, 19 of the 1200 block of South Harmon Avenue or Homan Avenue, the only person in the car to survive was charged Thursday with numerous crimes, including two counts of murder for the deaths of Marcus Thomas, 21, and William Tyler, 23. Police and prosecutors said all three were members of the New Breeds gang and had orders from gang leaders to kill a member of the traveling vice lords all right so this right here was 12 years ago okay 12 years ago we can say 18 days away from the 12 year mark okay 2018 18 days away from the 12 year mark of this incident between the new breeds, which is Kanika's uncle, who's one of the leaders, okay, and traveling vice, vice lords, okay. So there's a 12 year beef right there, all right. So we're thinking because they're not the conservative vice lords. Just because they have traveling in front of the name that they was just automatically cool. No. Alright. So I'm thinking this is the reason why when Kanika first walked in the room. She said hell I'm ready to go. Because remember Kanika and them were spotted walking to the room around 115 down the food court hall. Alright. So here it is. In her text message, we're going to get to this stuff right here some other time, but. Okay, remember I told you UTC time. They're five, five hours away from the UTC time. So at 120, she, I'm ready to go. You see what I'm saying? 
So it's already reported there was a whole bunch of Trevor and Vice Lords at the party. Okay? And there were dudes there when they first got there. Okay? So these are the Trevor and Vice Lords. She probably seen them niggas was like, oh, I'm ready to go. Fuck this, I'm ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, I ain't know they was going to be here. You feel me? So, with that being said, I mean, can is it safe to say that she was in trouble the whole time she was in the fucking room? Alright, now, watch this. Let's go back to that article. Uh, okay, the police officers, let me see. Yeah, okay, the police officers trying to pick the safest place to pull the car over stopped the Black Pontiac on Augusta Boulevard near Catsey Avenue because a bakery was on one side of the street and presented pretty much a block long brick wall. Said gang intelligence uh, commander Nicholas Roddy or Roddy. Uh, as officers approached the car which was stolen they saw a Thomas raising an assault rifle and they shot first at the car whatever okay police superintendent Philip Klein or clean clean or well formed a special task force months ago to us to investigate the escalating violence between the two gangs. Okay? Escalating violence. The heart of the dispute was over the new breed's effort to take over their rival drug turf at 15th Street and Christiana Avenue. And a gang. And a girl. New Breed's effort to take over their rival's drug turf at 15th Street and Christiana Avenue. And a girl. So this is why the New Breed's females are somehow getting connected to these traveling vice lords. Because they're pretty much in the same area with this rival shit. But what I don't understand is how are the girls able to associate themselves with these dudes when your fellow men are rivaling with these people? Okay? I don't know. I haven't really digged that much deep research into it, but it's just kind of odd to me. And as much as odd it is, for these gay men to be having kickbacks with straight gang men i've never heard of that one either is this some new school shit somebody please put that in the comments because i've never heard of gay men doing kickbacks with straight men of gang members i've never heard of it so in the anyway so here we are we have New Breeds, Kazi Avenue, Christiana Avenue, and a game, and then we have the Trevor and Vice Lords. And like I said, this is just 12 years ago. This is just 12 years ago. So was it a, a truce established between these two? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. All right. Let's continue. Police said they have recovered four other AK-47 rifles in the area that they believe may be related to the same dispute. One of the rifles has been linked to four homicides. Martin, one of the alleged gang leaders, has a pathological hatred of the traveling vice lords he has a pathological hatred of the traveling vice lords now you may say well you know the police go and paint that shit you know what i'm saying so that they can get rid of them or whatever but i mean 
Hey, evidence is evidence. You know what I mean? When you at war, God damn it, you have a pathological uh, hatred towards whoever you going to war with anyway. So those words are not really, you know, describing anything far-fetched from the norm anyway. You see what I'm saying? If I'm shooting at you or shooting in your motherfucking house, I got a pathological hatred. I don't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? I just shot in your house. I could have hit anybody. If I shoot in your car, I can hit anybody. So that's a pathological hatred right there. That's the norm. All right. The hit allegedly ordered Monday was in retaliation for the murder last week of Marquel Harper, a New Breeze member who was gunned down in Lawndale as he walked a 10 year old to school. Okay. So, come on, it's blood between these groups. It's blood between these groups. All right. Now, something I found very interesting. Nephew, Kenneth Jenkins, the brother of Kanika Jenkins. I found two arrests this year, June 19, 2018, and a month later, July 22, 2018. Okay. They both were in the evening time soliciting unlawful business. Let's go to the one in June. Y'all give me a second. All right. Age 18. So the reason why we don't see any arrest um, records before this year, because last year, evidently, he was a juvenile. All right, this is evidently. He was a juvenile last year. He's 18 this year, he was 17 last year. So when they say he was just getting out of jail or whatever, he was a juvenile last year, all right? And that's the reason why you don't see that record uh, before this year. You don't see a last year records or beyond, all right? Because it was a juvenile last year, 18 this year. So where's his location of arrest? Kedzie Avenue, okay? Kedzie Avenue, same area. New Breeze, all right? Same area. Soliciting unlawful business. Now, this was in June, all right? This was in June. I'm going to read that again. Soliciting unlawful business, right? Watch this. Y'all look at his face. Look at his face. Okay. You see the J there. Matter of fact, let me pull this up so you can see for yourself. Okay. All right. Let's look at his face. See that? See the J there? What do you see on the other side? It's clear on his eyes, right? It's clear under his eyes, right? And it's clear around his neck, right? All right. Y'all remember that picture. Keep that in your mind. So this is in June, okay? This year, June 19, Cats Avenue, soliciting an unlawful business. Now, Let's go to July 22nd. And once again, he's charged again with soliciting unlawful business. Okay. This time he got caught up in Spalding Avenue. What are you going to see? Now remember, this is from June 
to July. Okay, this is this year, June. As you can see so far already on his neck, he already got a tattoo on his neck. All right, okay. Now look on his eyes. He still got that same J on the other side, but on, on his, maybe that's his left. The boy ain't just got tear drops. The boy got a flood of tears on his eyes, huh? Hmm? What's that? Crying blood, right? Mm-hmm. And that be on his neck, that don't stand for blood. That's breed. It ain't BD, that's breed. Alright? That's breed. Following his uncle's footsteps, alright? It's breed. Why did he get these new tats? We're talking from June, you get arrested, then here come the next month, you, you get arrested again, and now you have these two new tats. And you're in up for the same thing. Hmm? Soliciting unlawful business. Now, what does that really mean? Who knows? All right. So you have to do a little more research on that. But let's find out what Spalding Avenue is. All right. Let's find out where that's at. All right. So here we go. Here's that exact address. Okay. So we're going to go to that exact address. She might have to do it this way. Well, hey, we'll do it this way. All right. Now. Sorry about that. All right. And it's kind of funny because uh, this is from June 2018. This picture from June 2018. So this is very current, this area. You know what I mean? It's very current. So let's see what area like. What what area like? Is this close by Kazi? That's what I'm trying to get at. All right. So let's um. Is this okay? No, that's enough for that. We'll just let me see. All right. So let's see. Kazzy, Kazzy, Kazzy. What well, down? Boom. Shout Kaz Avenue right there. Okay. Shout Kaz Avenue right there. Where they go? 13th Street right there. Hold on. Wait a minute. So let's go back over here. And let's check out his arrest before that in June, right? Fifteen oh three South Kazi. So where did I see Thirteenth and Kazi at? Where did I see? Did I see it in this article? Did we see that in this article? Hold on. 
Wait a minute. Okay, put the call and start the car on Augusta Boulevard near Cassie Avenue. Well, we seen something else that said, I don't know, maybe I'm tripping. Okay, 15th Street, 15th Street and uh, Christiana Avenue, right? Okay. So let's see where that's at, right? That's got to be close by. Maybe, maybe not. Here's Homan. Here's Christiana. Here's 13. Wait a minute. Christiana, 13. Would that be going up or down? That'd be going down. Right here. So here's 15 and Christiana right here. So the boy is in the area of the breeze. Okay? He's right down the area. Boom. He's right here in the area. And I'm pretty sure 1500 block of Cassie, that's right here, right? That's somewhere over in, in, so the boy, he's right in the hood of the breeze. He's right there, okay? So this is what his uncle has established for the breeze, okay? When they was going to war with the traveling vice lords 12 years ago, this is what they was establishing for the breeze. This is what his uncle was establishing. And now here it is 12 years later. He's also roaming in their same area, okay, as a breed. And he's benefiting from what his uncle put in. The work that his uncle put in and the other breeds put in. Going to war with the traveling vice lords. So now here we have a party, okay, with Irene in it, okay. She's the one that promoted the party on Facebook. And when Kanika gets there, boom, we have traveling vice lords right there. Now, you may say, well, her boyfriend was a traveling vice lord. We don't know the conditions of their relationship. He was locked the fuck up. Okay? He was locked up. And then so-called a week later, he gets released after her death. A week later after her death. Okay? So, who knows why... So many traveling vice lords was at this party. Okay? Because they say mostly traveling vice lords was there. So who knows why these traveling vice lords was there? But what we do know is, five fucking minutes later, after she arrives, as we see her, okay? Let's go to the footage. Let's go to the footage. Let me see what this one. Okay, not that one. Not that one. Let's go to the footage. All right. Now let's take this bite to about four one thirteen. Okay. From the last time I had. So they should be popping up soon. Okay, here they are right here, right? Boom! 113. This is when we spot them in the food court hallway. Alright? Alright? 114. 114. Okay? But then... At 120, what does this say? I'm ready to go. I kept trying to figure out what would make somebody get there so soon and boom, automatically, you're just so ready to go. This right here tells me that she wasn't really kicking it with this dude no more. Something went wrong. All right? Something went wrong. I don't think she was fucking with this dude no more. 
All right. I don't even think she was fucking with the traveling vice lords no more. Something went wrong. And who's to know? You can't trust Irene and them. You damn sure can't trust a uh, playful ass Monifa. You can't trust these motherfuckers. All right, because they done lied so much. Everybody done lied. Every oh, it was chill. It was cool. We done already established the fact that it wasn't that cool in that room at that time. All right. So I just kept saying, why would she keep saying I'm ready to go? Like you just got there. Like it ain't even been ten minutes. But who's roaming the halls though? Bravery is roaming the halls. Now remember, I told y'all. Because I remember at the beginning of this case, when this case first started, I remember hearing and seeing the fact that Bree had the keys. Somebody said that they had to wait on Bree Bree because she had the keys. Now, at the beginning, I was thinking room keys. But then later, later it was established. Okay, so here we are. Watch this. Watch this. Here we are. I'm ready to go. Bree Bree is roaming the hallways, right? Remember, we said she got Kanika keys. She got Kanika keys. Y'all watch this. Now, this, this, uh, this file right here, this statement. This is the police putting together some of the things that they that they've uh that that has occurred right some of the the, the statements and, and, and events that has occurred right so this is the police putting some of these things together right so this is a video deleted video that they got from somebody's phone i strongly believe this is uh monifa's phone okay these are deleted videos right so they're saying that these are deleted videos, but they're also saying that some of the things that this person, whoever this phone belongs to, and I, again, I believe this is Monifa, whoever phone this belongs to, they were saying that some of the things that they were saying did kind of go according to what was going on, right? So this is what made them put the text messages in because they was trying to align what this person was saying along with some of the text messages that was trying to align some of this stuff up now it reads as follows i was able to review a conversation such and such had with kanika I'm, again i think it's monifa had uh with kanika prior to the hotel party from information obtained through an interview with such and such they are discussing plans to okay this this is not about uh this when they were speaking of the text messages now this is about her friend that was supposed to go to the movies with her okay they were supposed to go see the movies right okay however at some point in the night kanika told such and such she changed her plans to go uh to go they supposed to say her plans to go to the hotel party at the crown plaza Okay, so these are Kanika's uh, test messages. Now, when you go further down, watch this. <laughs> this is going to fuck you up. This is going to fuck you up. All right? We already established that she said she's ready to go. Blah, blah, blah. Right? Watch this. This is going to fuck you up. Okay. Such and such later after Kanika went missing had a conversation with the phone number of blah 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 The person texting from that number was asking questions about what happened More specifically where Kanika may have gone So this right here now this is what I mean by when I say that I think they're talking about Monifa Okay because the person that was supposed to go to the movies with her didn't go to the, the hotel party with them Okay, so this got this got to be talking about Monifa because watch this watch this This person is explaining how when Kanika went missing they thought that Kanika was behind them Okay, who else was saying that the whole time? Monifa Monifa was saying this the whole time. I thought she was behind me. I thought she was behind me All right, so this is how I know 
This is this is more needful. Watch this. The person texting from that number was asking questions about what happened. More specifically, where Kanika may have gone. Okay. Again, I know this is Monifa. So I'm going to say Monifa responded with the following. Watch this. She responded with the following. We was all together. She texted me saying she ready to go. Huh? Watch this. See, I thought that was Bree. Watch this. So we went in the hallway, but she didn't have the keys. Watch this. So we went back in there, and I thought she was behind me, but she wasn't. Who was saying that the whole time that the girls was getting blamed? Who was saying this the whole time? Monifa. Monifa was saying this the whole time. I thought she was behind me. All right. Watch this. So now we know for a fact that this is Monifa who she said I'm ready to go to. So where the hell did Monifa go? Because we know Bree Bree was in the hallway. That's what made me think this was Bree. Uh, okay? I didn't have full evidence, but I was thinking with intuition, this got to be Bree because she's the only one in the goddamn hallway. Why would you text anybody else saying you ready to go if... Everybody is in the room with you except one person, which is Bree. All right. But this person is saying we was all together. She texted me saying she ready to go. So we went in the hallway, but she didn't have the keys. Why would you text somebody that's in the room? Could you not have said this? You see what I'm saying? Could you not have said this? Like, hey, girl, I'm ready to go. Could you not have gotten up and just went over there and said, hey, I'm ready to go? Okay, let's say they was in the same room. Let's say, you know, they were just on some teenager shit and, um, you know, Monif was on one side of the room, Kanika was on the other side of the room, and she just decided, I'm finna text Monifa and let her know I'm ready to go. I ain't got time to really get up and look for Monifa and get up and go over there and I can just text her. I'm right here. She over there. I can just text her. She'll see it. Because I see her playing with her phone. Let's say that, that that's what happened. Let's say Monifa was in the room. Alright. That's just for argument's sake. But watch this shit. But she didn't have the keys. So we went back in there. And I thought she, she was behind me. But she wasn't. Watch this. While texting that same number. Okay, Monifa has asked if she ever, if she ever acted or did anything like this before in reference to wandering off or going missing. Now, this is the police narrating. Okay, now Monifa responded, and here's the text No, she never did this before. Now, watch this while texting the same number. Monifa was asked if there was anyone suspicious at the, at the party. Monifa responded by sending the following text. No, everybody know her. She didn't leave from my side. I was next to her the whole night. I went with her every time she had to use the bathroom. Everything, 100. Okay, so she's next to you the whole night, right? And she decides to text you and say, I'm ready to go. Let, hey, for argument's sake, let's say they was right there. They was on some teenager shit. Instead of just speaking, I'd rather text you just to keep people out of our business. I'd rather just text you and you look down and you see that I'm ready to go, you know what I'm saying, without everybody seeing or hearing what's going on with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to just text you and let you know, even though you're right beside me, right? Okay, let's get on that for argument's sake. For argument's sake. Okay, keep listening. Keep listening. Monifa responded by sending the following text. No, everybody know her. She didn't, okay. By her side, she, the whole time, you know, the bathroom, everything, right? Okay. 
Monifa continues to explain what exactly happened in a manner that is con consistent to her statement given. Okay, when interviewed by Rosemont Detectives in a conversation with the phone number of such and such, such Monifa stated the following. Watch this. She said she was ready to go. We walked in the hallway, but she didn't have her phone or the car key. She didn't have her phone or the car key. Check this shit out. So, I'm like, we finna go back inside to get her phone and call Bree Bree for the key. Bree Bree had this girl keys. Bree Bree had this girl keys. Why would you take this girl keys? Why? You went out the front door. Y'all parked in the back. You went out the front door with Mike Mike and Cece. Kanika parked in the back. So if you was going with Mike, Mike, and Cece, why did you have to take Kanika keys? Why? So they didn't even go in the room to get Kanika phone and keys. They went in the room to get her phone. Which I'm starting to doubt they even went in the room to get a phone now. I think that was all bullshit. Because we was already told that we need to put the girl on the damn elevator. And she still have not confirmed that shit. She's still lying. Bree had this girl keys the whole fucking time. Ain't that some bullshit? Why did you have this girl keys? Mm -mm -mm. Now, and I'll scroll down all the way down to the bottom so you can read this for yourself later on some other time. Scroll back up. Matter of fact, let me do it the right way for you. All right. So you can read it for yourself later on. Now, I want to show y'all one more thing. One more thing. I'm going to also... Also, if y'all want to get more in tune with Kanika's relations with these gang members that was at the party, uh, go check out Malika's page. I'm going to leave a link in the description box to her page. And y'all can go check it out. She has very, uh, it is a very informative channel that she has on the whole, you know, the gang situation, who's who, things like that. Go check out, man. She has very good information, very valuable information on that, all right? Now, what I wanted to show you is the reason why, excuse me, the reason why <clears throat> Ty in his life couldn't fathom who was at the door 
until he got a good look. So I'm gonna make this kind of quick. This part right here. Um, let's see. All right, that's up here. Okay. So this is the police. Not this. This is supposed to be the um, statement of the security guard, right? I asked how long he had worked for Capital Security. So this is supposed to be the the, the statement of security, uh, the security guard. So the officer is saying, I then asked such and such if he had received any calls for noise complaints. Remember, the security guard went up to the room because of the noise uh, complaints. All right. We've already established the um, the other uh, room tenant who was complaining, all right, to the front desk. And he came up and said something to them about the noise or whatever. So this is his statement. He stated that between 2 and 2.30 on the 9th, he received a noise complaint call via radio from the front desk I asked him if anyone went with him all right now if you're reading along with me you can you can see that this does not be talking like that all right <laughs> these people that just have for those statements he stated that he responded to room 926 alone okay he continued that when he had he had he, when he exited the elevator there were two now y'all already know how close the elevator is to the room okay so just keep that in mind how close this elevator is to this room all right i asked him anyone went with him he stated that he responded to room 926 alone he continued that when he exited the elevator there were two male black subjects in their early to mid 20s okay on their cell phones so he has two black dudes sitting right there in the hallway on their cell phones when he came out of the elevator all right now again this is the security guard uh he told them that the front desk received complaints so he's telling the black dudes front desk received complaints and um that they were too loud one of the males stated that he was responsible for the room okay he was he was the host he was responsible for the room this is one one of the dudes told the security guard he recalled that one of the men text somebody. Okay, so one of the dudes text somebody in the room to open the door. And when the door to room 926 opened, a black female subject wearing big glasses opened the door. So he's the security guard said when he came off the elevator, he seen two dudes on their cell phone so he told them hey y'all too loud in that room in there. you know what i'm saying so one of the dudes texts somebody in the room for them to open the door he ain't even not he texts somebody in the room to open the door so when the room door open guess who's gonna be the first one to go in one of the dudes so this is the reason why over here You hear this? You ain't never seen a white folk. Nigga, you the one of Y'all finna get put out. Y'all finna get put out. Y'all get put out. What's up, bro? Nothing like my gun or something. What's up, nigga? Nigga, what's up? Pop that pussy. Let me see that. Let me see that. Let me see that. Yeah, it's too late for that. <laughs> yep, that was the manager. My car keys, my weed. Now watch what Ty say when that door opens. Ain't, no ain't no motherfucking manager. Why did he say that? Because when the door opened, the first person that came in wasn't the manager, it was one of the two dudes. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> see, see what I'm saying? It was one of the two dudes. So this is according to what the manager, or uh, uh, I mean, uh, what the uh, what the security guard is saying. But my thing is the voice of that security guard, and we're going to get to that on another video. But the voice to that security guard does not match that agent looking dude. The how he was sounding, is the, I, I just don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see that agent dude sounding like that. But we're going to get to that on another video. But that's the reason why Ty said, there ain't no motherfucking manager. Because it was one of the two dudes that was in the hallway that the security guard seen. So when they text somebody in there, hey, y'all open the door. That's why you heard somebody beforehand say they say uh, the manager is at the door. That was somebody texting and told them that the manager was at the door. So the person on the inside, you heard the female, right? You heard the female say that somebody, uh, somebody say the manager is at, no, they say the manager is at the door. Listen, just listen to it. See how the noise is still going and see they say it's the manager. Now that was Irene saying don't be so loud. But that was another female saying the manager is at the door. They saying the manager is at the door. She's saying that because she got that text. So when that door opened, it was one of the black dudes that text somebody on the inside. It was one of them. So Tasi, my bad. So Tasi, you know. Yep, I go to manager. My car keys, my weed. Yeah. And there go the ring or the ring tone. But now you see why Ty say that wasn't the manager. Okay? Now you see why. Okay? He continued that when he exited the elevator, there were two male black subjects in their new in their early to mid twenties on their cell phones. He told them that the front desk received complaints that they were being too loud. One of the males stated that he was responsible for the room. He recalled that one of the men text someone in the room to open the door. When the door to 926 opened, a black female subject wearing big glasses opened the door and when she opened that door one of these dudes coming through the door Ty seen him and Ty said that ain't no motherfucking manager so this proves around what time Ty's life was that's the reason why Ty wasn't in Irene's live. And I stated that on another video. This right here proves it. All right. So, with an overview of what we found out in this in this session, Brevery had key, uh, clinical keys. All right. The whole fucking time. And the fact that. There is. 
some tension or there's a possibility that there was some tension in that room still between breeds and traveling vice lords in fight i think kanika was the only connection to breeds in that room i i like to think so because everybody else it seemed like well i'd seen her before but yeah i seen her before but yeah yeah i know i know of her i know her through such and such such but so the only motherfucking friends that was there according to statements is Irene, Monifa, Bree, Shemaya, and possibly Shallow. Even the cousins say they ain't seen her in a long time. See what I mean? So I don't think there was any other breeds in the room other than Kanika. ready to go I can't stress this no more man I'm ready to go roughly five minutes after entering the room in fact roughly five minutes after we seen them in the hallway entering the hotel roughly five minutes i'm ready to go